It's Ollie from History Profiles and today I'm very excited to be working with Magic Spoon, my favourite cereal brand. I personally have it every day before I work out or go to the gym. There's a variety of flavours, but my favourite is the cocoa flavour. Mm. As well as the cereal being delicious, it is high in protein, having 13 grams of protein per serving. It also has just 4 grams of net carbs per serving, being keto friendly. It has 0 grams of sugar and is gluten free, grain free, and contains no artificial colours or sweeteners, being the perfect healthy breakfast or snack. I've personally got some fitness and health goals I'm planning to achieve this year, and eating well is half the battle, and Magic Spoon is really helping me, as it's low carb, high protein, and a no sugar alternative to any unhealthy food cravings I may have, and it's really tasty. Growing up, I always loved cereal, and I idolised the warriors in movies. As I grew up, I realised to look like them I couldn't eat cereal all the time, because it's full of sugar. But Magic Spoon has given me the opportunity to have a better diet while enjoying it, to try and look like my childhood heroes, while energising me to have a great day. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today, to help you accomplish your health goals in the new year. Grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code History Profiles at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com forward slash history profiles. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with an 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code history profiles for five dollars off or go to magicspoon.com forward slash history profiles to save five dollars today in this video i will be taking you to 17th and 18th century france this was a time where king louis the 14th would assert his power by his rule of absolute monarchy usually a king or queen is limited to their decisions or lawmaking by the government or lords governing their own lands However, with absolutism, the king is limited by no means and has absolute power. He is not bound or restricted by any governing body. As King Louis XIV would often say, I am the state. Marie Anne de Bourbon's father was King Louis XIV, and due to his rule being one of absolutism, she would grow up knowing her father had consolidated power in France to the point where he could not be questioned. This is her story. Marie Anne was born in 1666 in secret, and at birth, she would be immediately taken out of the arms of her mother and would be raised by another family. Marie was the oldest illegitimate daughter of King Louis. Her mother was Louise de la Valliere, who was the king's mistress. Even though Louise was the king's mistress, she was reportedly an innocent religious girl who was not extravagant or interested in money or titles. The king, however, would later find a new mistress. Marie Anne was the fourth child of the king and her mother. All of her siblings, however, had died early. She was born in secret and was taken away far from the king's court, where her mother was fighting for her declining favour with the king, as he had fallen out of love with her and fell in love with another woman. Louise de la Valliere was torn between trying to regain the king's love or to repent and retire to a convent for her sinful life as a mistress. Growing up, Marie Anne, the king's daughter, would hear about the love affairs of her father being a product of one herself. When she was just a child, she was put under the care of Madame Colbert, the wife of the king's finance minister, Jean Colbert. This was done to try to keep Marie away from the intrigues and scandals of the king's court. The year following her birth in 1667, she would be legitimised by a letter licence, apparently because her father had her in mind as a bride for his cousin, the Duke of Savoy, which meant she would now receive all the titles and privileges of a legitimate daughter of the king. Marie was presented to the court in 1674. Her mother, however, Louise de la Valliere still wanted to retire to a convent as she couldn't bear to see the king with his new mistress 
Madame de Montespan on a daily basis. She, however, was not allowed to leave the court. The king hoped that if Louise saw her daughter to be admired by all, it might make her reconsider things. Plus, the king still wanted to hide his new mistress from the public. However, Louise was not swayed, and the only thing that kept her at court was the lack of her permission to leave. After many years of struggle, Louise was finally granted permission to leave the court. She gave up all of her worldly possessions and titles and retired to a convent. Marie Anne always remained close to her mother and would visit her often. When Marie Anne grew up, she would become the king's favourite female child and was said to be the king's most beautiful daughter. She would have a fine education, eat the best food and would have a very luxurious life. When Marie was 14, the family of the Duke of Savoy refused the proposal her father made due to her bastardy. Not wanting to lose favour with the king, however, the family of the Duke proposed a nephew to marry Marie instead. On the 16th of January in 1680, Marie married her cousin, Louis Armand de Bourbon, the Prince of Conti. It is reported that her beauty was so immense that the Prince of Conti had fallen in love with her at first sight and would do anything in his power to woo her and win her over. The dowry of Marie was one million livres, a huge sum of money. However, the marriage was quite the scandal as the wedding night, where the couple were meant to be intimate, was said to be a failure. A young Marie, now a married woman, would shock the royal court by mockingly saying that her husband was not good at the art of making love. No doubt the king's favourite daughter was very different to her mother, even though she was a king's mistress. They did not share the same nature. Her mother was described as an innocent and pious woman, but based on Marie telling the court her new husband couldn't perform in the bedroom, this conveys a huge difference in character. While Marie was charming, beautiful and smart, her husband was said to be more of the devout sort. He was unattractive and had a slight hunchback. He was in love with her, but Marie, not so much with him. Due to Marie embarrassing her husband, the Prince of Conti, in court by saying he wasn't skilled in the art of lovemaking, he would turn to debauchery, so much so that Marie's father, the king, had to get involved and order him to stop in order to not have his beloved daughter humiliated publicly. When Marie was a child, she would grow up with Louis de Bourbon, the Count of Vermandois, who was her brother, and the two would share the same birthday. They were extremely close, but her brother would be exiled from court after being involved in a homosexual scandal with a French nobleman. During the exile of the young Count, he fell ill. Despite being ill, Louis was desperate to regain his father's love and to regain his reputation in court. He would then fight in the siege of Coutre. However, he would die around a year later, at the age of 16. His father, the king, did not even shed a tear when he died, but his sister Marie was devastated at the death of her brother. A few years later, in 1685, tragedy would strike Marie again when she contracted smallpox. Marie and her husband did not get along well. The Prince of Conti spent most of his married life abroad completely away from her. However, when he heard his wife was ill with smallpox, he was summoned. Marie's husband would contract the disease and would die within five days, while Marie made a full recovery. This left Marie as a very young widow, and due to the inheritance her husband left her, her wealth was now immense. Over the next few years, she was widely courted and men would flock to her for her hand. Not only was she extremely beautiful, she had her own wealth and was the daughter of a king. She was reputed to have taken on several lovers over the next few years. She would never remarry. The Sultan of Morocco, Ismail ibn Sharif, would propose to marry, but she refused him. After her husband's death, Marie was known as Madame la Princesse de Conti. While Marie was one of the most important women at court for a while, 
things would change in time. Her half-younger sister, Louise Francois de Bourbon, the legitimized daughter of King Louis XIV and his mistress, Madame de Montespan, married the heir of the Prince de Conde. Since the Condes outranked the Contis, Marie now had to pay respects to her younger sister Louise, and Louise was paying her respects to Marie up until this very point. This would annoy Marie and would cause some tension between the sisters. Another of Marie's half-sisters, Françoise Marie, would marry the heir of Louis XIV's brother, elevating her above both of her sisters. And she did flaunt her titles and place in the hierarchy whenever she could. This would enrage her sisters. Marie, however, did have one thing her sisters did not. Since Madame de Montespan was married when she became the king's mistress, her name could not be on the documents of legitimization. While Marie's mother was a reputed pious and quiet woman, she was unmarried and was named on the document. This allowed Marie to mourn her mother in public when she died in 1710, something the daughters of Madame de Montespan couldn't do with their own mother. Marie lived a very comfortable life. She had enough wealth to do whatever she wanted. She was involved in various intrigues in her life. After the death of her father, Louis XIV, she would fall in love with a poor knight, perhaps loving to hear of the struggles of the average man, how they lived their lives, and of course, this knight was a man of action, and not the rich pampered men she would usually see in court. Marie was still renowned for her beauty, even at an older age. It seemed that her loveliness was nearly eternal, and she was still a well sought after woman, and would still turn heads well into her 40s and 50s. In 1725, Marie would completely retire from her life at court and would spend all of her time at her various estates. She would live on her own terms for most of her life, especially towards the end of it. On the 3rd of May, 1739, she would die of a brain tumour, aged 72. No doubt Marie had a very good and extravagant life. But the life of the daughter of a king in reality isn't everything that is portrayed in films. They are usually controlled for most of their life. They are told who they are to marry because of duty. They live for their family, and the family position is more important than their personal happiness. So, tell me what you think of Marianne in the comment sections down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.